It has been officially one year and six days since we initially splashed our trawler pivot after working on her in the boatyard for a month. Since then, we've traveled over 2,000 miles and lived aboard almost every single night, minus a brief stint this summer. So we figured it'd be a great time to reflect and let you guys know our thoughts and opinions after owning a boat for a year. We are in Isla Morada, one of the many islands of part of the Florida Keys, and we have been in this particular anchorage for about 12 days. And today we are leaving this anchorage, pulling up our anchor and heading south to Marathon. Now we are definitely coming back here because this was a fantastic anchorage uh, and it's, it is pretty hard to leave. We have two friends of ours on board and right now they are cooking us breakfast and it smells amazing. When they bring it up, we will introduce you to the two people we've had on board for the past week and they're staying with us for a total of three weeks on Pivot. Knock, knock. Hi. Give me breakfast. Oh, thank you. Kind of messy, yeah. but. Yeah, that looks so good. good. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. Our famous oh breakfast sandwiches. Wow. <laughs> These are our friends Alicia and Nate who are visiting us for approximately three weeks while we are in the Keys and they are getting a little bit of a taste of boat life and they are also full-time travelers and YouTubers. Hi guys! Whoa. We are loving boat life so far. But oh, good. we're only like 10 days in so who knows what will happen. <laughs> and we and don't know how to operate a boat so we just click for it. We actually just hit our two year anniversary of traveling full time, which is way longer than we both ever expected, I think. And much longer. <laughs> so far we've been to five continents and 20 countries, and this is our first time living on a boat. Now when we decided to purchase Pivot, we did so with zero prior experience. So pretty much everything we're gonna go over in this video is from zero or from scratch. Looking back on this past year, living on a boat full time, we have really learned to respect and appreciate the good days. Uh, we've learned that boat life is this like really weird cycle that you go through. You have really, really high highs and really, really low lows. So one day you could be just absolutely enjoying the weather. You have the most idyllic cruising day possible. The weather, the conditions, it's gorgeous. The scenery is incredible. But then the next day you could be going through a really tough storm. You could be having a dragging anchor. You could, have, you could have leaks in your boat, and you would just have this constant contrast of really high highs and really low lows. And so it's just this interesting like wave and cycle that you go through, or that we've at least gone through in this past year of boat life. But that doesn't go without saying, if we didn't have those not so great days of cleaning out a sewage tank, or fixing the leak, or our transmission stopping, we wouldn't, it wouldn't give us that relative appreciation for those really, really incredible days. So we are, it is in this, it's this weird place where you're very grateful for the good days, but the bad days help you appreciate the good. One of the things we've really learned from having this boat for a year is just how important maintenance is and that an ounce of prevention really is worth a pound cure. Nowadays, we are very strict about our engine maintenance. Um, Linda, our, uh, our Ford Layman, runs great. We wanted her to continue to run great, great. And then just everyday things. So if we hear a rattling, 
it's the, the the knowledge that oh we should go figure out what's rattling because that could be something that's about to break or maybe because it's rattling it might break sooner because it's not being used its intended way and so we have really gotten in tune with listening to pivot hearing the noises that she's making especially at anchor and one of the things that it just happens every time anytime we leave the boat for a night and we come back that first night's tough because there's so many noises that you're just thinking about everything and since we're in charge of the boat it's up to us to figure out and make sure nothing is going to cause any problems Living on a boat has really taught us to be in tune with our natural environment around us. We have four solar panels on Pivot, which is how we get a majority of our power. We also have a generator whenever we are running really low, and we have an alternator for alternator charging when we do run Pivot. However, as we stay on anchor for several days at a time, we really rely on our solar panels to bring in quite a bit of energy. And running a YouTube channel, having computers, lots of cameras, we use quite a bit of power. Before we moved on to the boat and we lived on land and had access to the grid with unlimited power, it was great, it was fine. But we weren't really in tune with like how much power we were actually using or ways to conserve power and electricity. Now, we turn off our inverter at night, which turns off all of our AC charging, so we don't charge majority of our electronics at night. And we just have the, major the, the basic boat electronics on the, our DC power. Living on a boat has also made us very cognizant of water conservation in two particular ways. One, doing the dishes, and two, showering. And both use kind of a similar method, is that we turn on the faucet, we rinse off, rinse the dishes, we turn off the faucet, we use the soap, we slather up, and then we turn the faucet back on and rinse everything off. And this new way of doing dishes and showering saves us a ton of water, but is not something that we used to do when we were on land because we had an unlimited supply of water available to us. One of the big differences that we realized when we first bought Pivot was just how different it is to maneuver a boat compared to a car or any other vehicle that you would use on land. And it basically anything you do, there's a delay. At least that's how Pivot um, operates. And I'm sure it's different from other boats, but you turn Pivot and then a couple of seconds later, Pivot turns. And there's a lot more factors at play with current, the wind, and uh, our throttle too. Um, the, fa the faster we're moving, the faster we'll turn. So that was just a big learning experience and getting the feel for the wheel and how turning it a little bit this way and that way and moves with it. Yeah. As we come into our final destination of Marathon, we are expecting some rain. There are a few ominous clouds out in the distance. Um, but we expect, and it is predicted with the weather window, um, to have some rain today. Now we are needing desperately to go to the dock to get some water, and then we'll be going out and anchoring. And we'll probably be doing that in the rain. Just another way that boat life has taught us that the weather rules basically everything, and that we have to be flexible. And having a positive attitude as we are probably going to be docking and anchoring in the rain and we'll be most likely drenched by the end of it. It's just part of the lifestyle and um, we try to embrace it when we can. Thankfully, we did not have to dock in the rain and we did not have to anchor in the rain. We arrived to Marathon safely and uh, just in time for sunset. <laughs> it is 
so crowded here. We had no idea what to expect, but there are so many boats around. Luckily, we found a spot. Um, not exactly an ideal spot, but, you know, anchors down and, and we made it safely, so. The last thing that I personally learned after being on the boat for a year is that things are a little bit harder on a boat than on land. So if we were in a van, we could easily drive up to maybe a Home Depot or a Lowe's and fix whatever was wrong in the van right in the parking lot. But here on the boat, you have to figure out the part that you need. You have to either walk or bike to a Lowe's or a Home Depot with a dinghy ride in between. Or a West Marine. Or a West Marine. You have to get the part, you have to bring it all the way back. And then if the part doesn't work or doesn't fit or whatever, you have to do the whole thing over again. <laughs> so that plus like getting groceries, it's a little bit more complicated or getting groceries that have like easy access to the water um, has just taught us the additional like effort that you have to put in into boat life. And I have just two f final points too. One is that now our schedule, it's hard to be a little bit more, uh, you know, impulsive on the boat because a lot of it depends on the weather, like Shen was saying. So we have to look two days out, at least two or three days out, and then to see the next week to see which directions wind's coming. And so that's definitely changed a lot for us. And then the final thing is just the boating community has been fantastic. Like so many people have offered us advice and help and offered us their docks. And it's just really nice to be a part of this community. People are just super friendly. Yeah. So talking about people, we are going to end our day with some sundowners with our friends and the people that we love very, mu very, very much. Um, yeah, just to kind of uh, close out the day. Yeah, and if you have a boat and have anything that you've come to learn about boat life and, and living on the water, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear it. Yeah. These are our friends, Alicia and Nate, and they... Wait, wait, wait. Okay, now you're good. <laughs> Just how important, how important is The importance of... You want an extra fly, bro? <laughs>